Hello, this is Mr. Buss, and in this video, I'm going to walk through the AP Biology lab that we did, or activity, uh, dealing with adding an insulin gene from human DNA into a plasmid. And in this activity, uh, we referenced a few concepts. One is the restriction enzymes, so that'll be something you want to um, look up before maybe you run the activity, and another would be uh, plasmids as vectors car to carry um, other genes. So in this activity, we had three handouts, uh, a handout on restriction enzymes with the restriction sites shown and where the cuts would be. Notice these are all uh, sticky end cuts where the cut, a, a blunt cut would go straight across. These cuts that they are gonna make are all going to be um, sticky end cuts. So we had uh, nine different restriction enzymes possible to use. On the yellow paper, I have the uh, plasmid DNA sequence, and then I have already cut that out here. So there's my plasmid DNA. So notice it's uh, taped together as a circular structure. And then there's one shaded region on here that we're gonna call the origin region, origin of replication. So we wanna make sure that whatever we do, we don't cut that section of the plasma, otherwise it won't be able to uh, replicate itself. So the restriction enzymes have been cut out, the plasmid, and then another handout, which would have been the uh, human DNA containing a shaded region uh, representing the insulin gene. So I've, it, that I'm just gonna leave linear, all right? And so the non-shaded region is just human DNA. The shaded region is human DNA with the insulin gene. And so I have human extra, kind of extra DNA on each side of the insulin gene. So the purpose of this activity is to identify and use the best restriction enzyme uh, to insert the insulin gene into the plasmid. And so how do we figure that out? Well, the restriction enzyme that will work the best will have the ability to make one cut on the plasmid and only one cut and not cut the origin of replication. So we wanna open the plasmid up so the sequence, this sequence, for instance, CCTGG, needs to be on here. So then I'm gonna search, I'll start with the origin of replication here, just so that I know when I've made it all the way around. I'll look for CCTGG. All right, didn't find it. So this restriction enzyme isn't anywhere on the plasmid, so it can't cut the plasmid open. So this restriction enzyme, I'm just gonna totally get rid of that one. Take it out of play. Now I've got eight left. And I'll look for another one here. GGGCCC. I did find that one. Okay, so I'm going to mark that with a pencil. And I'll number that one number eight. So I don't have to look for it again. So this one will cut the plasmid. Let me just make sure that it won't cut it more than once. I don't want to cut the plasmid more than once. Nope. Okay, so this one's a possible and uh, restriction enzyme that'll work. And then in order to make sure that it works, not only do I have to cut the plasmid once and only once and not at the origin, but I also have to cut the human DNA on each side of the insulin gene to create those sticky ends as well. So I'm gonna now look on the um, human DNA and see if I can find that sequence. GGGCCC. Yep, here it is, GGGCCC, so I'll mark that. Okay. And then I'm make sure that it doesn't cut again on this side. Nope, make sure it does not cut the insulin gene sequence. Nope, 
Nope, and I'll make sure it cuts on this end. Yep, it does. Okay, so this enzyme right here, enzyme number eight, will work, but I noticed that there's a lot of extra space here between where it cuts and where the insulin gene starts. So I'm gonna see if there's a better restriction enzyme that cuts closer to the insulin gene without cutting the insulin gene. Because even though this one works, it's leaving a lot of extra space. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if there's an even better one that'll work. So I'm gonna check this one out. This one's enzyme number two, and I'm gonna look for this sequence now, TTCGAA. There it is. Mark the cut. That's number two. Okay, that one's only on there once, so that's good. And let's see if that's on the human DNA as well. It is TTCGAA. I like that is a lot closer. There's the insulin gene where it starts, and that's where the cut would be. So it's a lot closer than the last one I just looked at. So I'm going to mark this cut. All right, that's enzyme number two. I'm going to see, make sure it's not on the insulin gene and see if it gets closer. TTCGAA. Okay, not, not in the insulin gene, so that's good. Now let me see if it's... There it is. Oops. Okay, I'm going to use that one. I'm going to use enzyme 2 because, again, it cuts the plasmid once and only once, not at the origin of replication. So it'll open the plasmid up. Let me go ahead and do that. Find that, there it is. I'm gonna make the cuts exactly as they're shown on the restriction enzyme. I'm gonna make those cuts the same on the plasmid. Okay, so if I put this restriction enzyme in a solution with the plasmid, it'll open the plasmid up, okay? The plasmid will not reattach to itself necessarily. We're gonna hope that it reattaches to the insulin gene where I've cut the insulin gene. So now I need to also make the same cut where the sequence is shown above the insulin gene, right there. Sometimes words like upstream or downstream are used. So there, this, seg this segment here does not contain the insulin gene. It's got the human DNA. And this is just an extra fragment that I, I'm not, it's not gonna be needed, okay? So I'm just gonna put that off to the side. And then I'm gonna cut the human DNA with the restriction enzyme, again, where it's shown, where the cut is shown at that sequence, at that restriction site, it's called. So restriction enzymes are specific. Again, there's an extra piece of human DNA that's not needed. So now in solution, if I add the these two things together, they're gonna naturally sync up. Why? Because when these come in contact with each other, they're gonna stick because of the hydrogen bonds that are gonna form between the T and A, the thymine and adenine, and the C and the G, the cytosine and the guanine. So you can see that those are gonna match up. And then ligase would be an enzyme that would add 
uh, phosphodiester bond along the sugar phosphate backbone. So um, I'm going to go ahead and tape those together then, where those sticky end cuts were made by the restriction enzyme. So there. Plasmid DNA, human DNA, insulin gene. And then again, let's connect the plasmid back into a circular structure here. Again, sticky end cuts, adenine and thymine are across from each other, cytosine and guanine are across from each other. Since I used the same restriction enzyme to make the cuts, they'll match up. Okay, so there, I have a piece of recombinant DNA now, where I have the human insulin gene with a little extra DNA on each side connected to a plasmid, a small circular section of DNA that would occur in bacteria. And now every time the bacteria replicates, that origin of replication is intact, it'll replicate this plasmid. So now every time it does that, the bacteria can now produce insulin. The bacteria doesn't need insulin, we do, so we can harvest that insulin protein that's produced because we've added the DNA from humans into bacteria and we can collect that and then we can provide that for people that are diabetic that need insulin.